Today's podcast is sponsored by the Royal Homeland Constabulary. If you dream of a hopeful future with endless opportunity, travel and top-notch training, sign up to the RHC. You'll be paid one groat per week. You'll get your own straw cesspit in the communal barracks and you'll have a wonderful time mingling with all the thieves, bandits, muggers and other assorted scum and villainy. Sounds lovely. But when they say travel, they just mean down the street to find out who threw eggs at Madame Brandybog's garter show house. And it's usually just Bert. All the tabletop role-play news We aim to amuse and we aim to enthuse And Morris is unofficial tabletop RPG Hello, 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 and welcome to Morris's unofficial tabletop RPG talk. I, as always, am Russ, a.k.a. Morris, or Morris, a.k.a. Russ. And with me, as always, is... Peter Coffey from the Southampton Guild of Role Players. Russ, I love it. A pleasure to be here. <sighs> you know, um, you know, we had those problems last week with our, uh, with our sound recording. Hey, if you've got sound recording problems, I feel bad for you, sir. I've got nightmare problems with sound recording somewhere. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they have not been solved, so unfortunately, we're having to continue Operation Cuddle this week. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> As we snuggle up in front of my PC rather than sitting comfortably on a couch with our own microphones. Very well, but tidy band speed a little sweet. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, um, if we do sound a little off again this week, that will be why. Uh, Although I thought we sounded fine last week after Daryl had sort of run it through a bunch of filters and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, the auto tune I felt may have been going a little too far, but I don't like to say how to do his job. <laughs> auto tune. <laughs> dear, dear, dear. Yeah. So, should we do some news? Do you, do you remember our guests? Our who? Guests on guests. this podcast. We have had many. Do we have when, guests? When I said many, we've had a, a handful. Oh, yes, yes, we do, of course, yes. Uh, uh, we've had that nice Ed Jowett. We've had Rodney Thompson. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had... Um, many of us. Many of us. <laughs> many of us who are important. And whose names I will remember, given sufficient time. Or do you remember having Chris Spivey on the podcast? Yeah, yeah it's Chris Spivey. How's he doing? He's doing fine. He came on our podcast, talked yes. all about Harlem Unbound. Yes, and he mentioned he had lots of secret projects that he could not talk about. But now we know what one of them is. Uh, what is it? Do you want to know? Well, yes, that's why I asked. What's this? Are you sure? Yes, Russ. Again, that's why I asked. Okay. Focus, he, focus. He is writing yes. a subversive horror Western RPG mm. called Haunted West. Mm. So it's set in a weird West American frontier in the wake of the Civil War. Okay. As with Harlem Unbound, he says it will bring people of colour to the fore. Okay. Uh, focusing on stories and characters often ignored or mistreated in the Western genre. Mm. A brand new role-playing game system. Yes. Oh. Um, designed by himself, uh, Ariel Celeste, Neil Raymond Price, and Brennan Reese. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, that's pretty much all we know about it so far. Okay. So it's you know it's it's still kind of sounds like it's going to be still a little bit. Um, Maybe Cthulhu, maybe subversive horror. I don't sort of subversive horror. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Um, I guess um, subverting the standard expectations of the horror tropes. I guess. Yeah. I guess. I guess so. Well, uh, certainly, certainly a person with great attention to detail. I, I, I will look forward to seeing this. So. He's, he says he's got um, uh, inspiration from um, pioneering Black Marshall Bass Reeves or Bass Reeves, one of those two mm-hmm. things. Yes. Um, infamous gunfighter Doc Holliday. Okay. Uh, Deadwood resident Phi V. Wong. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've not seen Deadwood, so. I, I have. Uh, I, he, he, he's, not, he's not a man who knows a great deal of English, but the English he does use, he uses with great effect. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Daryl will have to believe it all out. Hmm. Uh, Sergio Leone's trilogy uh, and uh, the sci fi Western Firefly. Right. Hmm. So, uh, it's going to be a bit of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hmm. Uh, and this was dollars a few dollars more I guess so Mish Bosh alrighty uh, yeah I look forward to that um, obviously it will invite comparisons to Deadlands um, yes yeah it yeah. sounds very much like it will yeah although Deadlands gave us had an original edition and then gave us Savage World so I'll be interested to see what someone there was even I think a D20 edition of Deadlands back in the day 
Really? I think there was. If my if my memory, I I'd have to check. I, I want, might I might be imagining this, but if my memory serves me correctly, there was a D twenty edition of Deadlands. Well, it, well, if this was at well, to be fair, if it was at the OGL time, it was the D twenty edition of everything. Yes, that is true. Like nothing could move without being D twenty five. There was a D twenty edition of my new car. Did I mention my new car? You have a new car. I have a new car. Really? It's red. Did you give us a Yeti? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, I think a more horror-based version could be interesting because, obviously, system mechanics are very much a thing. Yeah. Uh, the original Deadlands was very much based on, based on poker cards, as I understand it. Mm. Never got to play that. Uh, haven't even got to play the Savage Worlds version. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, um, I have heard of it. So I, I look forward to seeing what he does with this particular sort of niche but interesting yeah. kind of thing. But he's also doing that um, sci-fi RPG for Chaosium, isn't he? Ooh. Which is as yet... Oh, that's still not, under... Yeah, still under wraps, so still, we don't know what it's called or anything like that. Still in Perda. Yeah, yeah. But That'd remember? be an awesome name for a sci-fi game. In Perda. In Perda? Yes. How do you spell that? Um, in, and then P-U-R-D-A-H. Perda. Awesome. I've never heard of that word. Oh, um, it's a Hindi term, and it basically means, um, like, in isolation, keeping shut up, yeah. and uh, not telling people stuff, so, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, what else do we have in the news? I don't know. What else do we have in the news? Mm. Ooh. We I, have I, the iPod. Uh, Heroes of Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah. So, one nice. of the uh, lead designers... Of Baldur's Gate, yes. you know he was at Bioware. He left Bioware a couple of years ago, started up a D and D game studio, yeah. and he's doing that Odyssey of the Dragon Lords thing we talked about last week. Yes, that's not the only thing he's doing. What? Yeah. Um, there's also uh, yes. Heroes of Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. He and uh, so James Orlin and Jesse Sky, both from Bioware, mm-hmm. have released. Um, it's over on DM's Guild, but you can get it in PDF and in uh, and in hardcover. Okay, exciting. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's 160 pages. Nice. Obviously for D&D 5th edition. It's an adventure. Yes. And it goes from levels 1 to 6. Okay. And it also includes stats for a bunch of characters from the video games, like Minsk and Jahira and um, Edwin and um, Imoen and all that lot. Right. Um, along with, like, monsters and backgrounds and maps of Baldur's Gate and the Sword Coast and all that sort of stuff. Does it have, like, little things you can constantly have their voices playing and being annoying. I'm sure it does. Marvel. And also, every time you try to leave the area, it will go, you must gather your party before venturing forth. No, no. You must gather your party before venturing forth. <laughs> yes. That was quite annoying. Mm-hmm. And it's just, just had like an auto-gather. It's sort of like, okay, just everyone come in. So the hey boy. So well, well, the game knows what I'm trying to do because it's made that statement. So it knows I'm trying to venture forth. Yes. It is well, aware of the fact that I'm trying to venture forth because it's because it's nagged me for doing so. Or, or it might think that you're just trying to um, explore and that you've uh, randomly wandered onto the wrong side of the screen. I suppose. Well, I mean, yeah, it could happen. But anyway, yes. um, Who Was a Birders Gate is out from them. Marvellous. And it looks lovely. Yes. Yeah. And it's- that's not the only thing um, that James Orland is doing. Also, right. he revealed this week that... He has been hired by Wizards of the Coast um, to open a game studio in Texas. Okay. And this game studio, which I am assuming means video game studio, given his background. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, so will be owned by Wizards of the Coast, headed yeah. up by James Orton. Right. And at the moment, it's not dealing with um, D&D or Magic the Gathering. Yes. They're working to develop some new IPs oh, of some oh, kind. Oh. But it's all very, very top secret and nobody really knows exactly what's going on there. Yes. But, yeah. So he's, he's, he's basically been in all the news this week. Right. He did his Odyssey of the Dragon Lords thing. Yes. He's done Heroes of Bardas Gate. Yeah. And he's heading up... A new studio. A new studio. So especially all the news is about James Oren, formerly of Bioware. Right. So, yeah, it's been a good week for him. Getting everywhere, yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Yeah, yeah. Wizard well, of the Coast, historically, it, haven't been amazing at um, developing electronic stuff in-house. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see how that goes, I guess. Yeah, maybe if do some sort of, one of those memoir pickers. Memoir pickers. A massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Oh. Uh, they call it like hopefully. Dungeons and Dragons or something. <laughs> there is one, isn't there? Oh yes, so there is. Yeah. Yes. Dungeon Dragons you Online. It. No, never. No. Okay. I think no. I did, and I think I did once briefly for about half an hour or something. Yeah, I think it might have been using 
Pathfinder 3.8. No, I think it was 4th edition, actually. 4th edition? I think. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I might be wrong. Yes. I think it was in the 4th edition. It's still around, is it? Mm-hmm. I don't know, either. Uh, he's had, he's had to ask someone to play. There's Neverwinter. Oh, but Neverwinter's nice, too. It's classic. No, no, just Neverwinter. Neverwinter? Yeah, there's a, oh. there's a m- m- more, more g- called really? Neverwinter as well. It's been around for a few years. Oh, okay. I don't know what system that uses. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's good for that. No? Yeah. Should we move on? I think we should. Okay, then. Um, so INGM Games yes. have the outfit who um, were working with Sean Astin as oh, the, yes, from yes. The Hobbit. Yes. And not from The Hobbit, from Lord of the Rings. Yes. He is a Hobbit from Lord of the Rings. Uh, Sean Astin's an actor. He plays a Hobbit. He plays a Hobbit. He's not an actual Hobbit. Okay. And he's in Stranger Things. He's quite adorable. Yes. So. Uh, anyway, um, he is um, working on that Grimmer Space setting for Grim- Starfinder. Grimmer Space. Grimmer Space. Grimmer. Yes, right, we right, had this right. exact conversation last week, and you mispronounced it in exactly the same way last week, too. Oh, really? No. Yeah. <laughs> I really pay attention to what, what, what I'm doing in this podcast. That, that seems like that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. So Grimmer Space was that thing that Wesley Snipes was originally involved in and then kind of disappeared from. Do you remember? As is his want. Mm. Um, so it's Sean Astin um, plus INGM Games, mm-hmm. and um, they've, they're doing a Kickstarter for Grimmer Space later this year. Okay. I, think, I think in June, I think. Okay. I want to say June, um, but they've released um, an adventure for it yes. before the setting, and I think it's basically sort of pre-Kickstarter hype, essentially. Uh-huh. Um, and the adventure is called Abattoir 8. Okay. Mm. Yes. It sounds absolutely lovely. Do you so think f- it's a prequel to Slaughterhouse 9? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, so, obviously, Grimmer Space is a horror sci-fi setting. Yes. Um for Starfinder. So Abattoir 8 is written for four to six characters at first to third level. I'm just going to sniff your markets. <laughs> Typically God. finished in two gaming sessions mm-hmm. uh, with a bit more splatter and survival horror than most sci-fi RPG adventures. Right. Um, there's an afflicted agricultural station on the edge of colonised space. Mm-hmm. That's basically all I know. I mean, I, I haven't actually downloaded it and read it, so... Yeah. Uh, where we go? We, a mysterious disaster leaves an orbiting agricultural space station silent and dark. The halted flow of food threatens nearby colonies with starvation, rioting, and desertion. And I guess you've got to go in and um, solve the problem. Yes, yes. yes. Sure, we'll shoot them. I say, as mm. they were. Yeah, and I'm sure there's lots of nice, friendly creatures on there, including that lovely guy with a chainsaw oh. for a hand. Oh yes, yes. The giant murder zombie. Because yeah. of course, that's what you want in your um. Like, you know, if they all just went vegan and ate, like, plant protein and stuff like that, it'd be much more efficient and would resolve exactly this sort of problem. People don't just murder for food, though. People sometimes murder just because they're evil. Well, there is that, but, and I'm just going to throw it out of this, like, having a specific place designed to have that sort of thing happen does seem like a bit of an oversight. I suppose so. Yeah. I suppose so. Anything else in the news? Yes. Uh, you want to, me to tell you, or...? No, I just want to guess. Guess. Just guess what's in the news. There's a lot of the, the, lot of the show <laughs> seems to be based on you guessing about stuff. So. <laughs> well, let's have a look at them. What else is there in the news? Uh, legend lore. Mm-hmm. You can play as yourself oh, in a fantasy you world. Oh, I see. So you can, instead of playing as a character, you play as yourself? Yes. Right. Um, I don't know how it works exactly, but this is uh, by um, Onyx Path. Okay. They do a lot of the... Um, World of Darkness or Chronicles of Darkness one of those two yeah I, I never know which is which one of those two and um, yeah so this Legend Lore system is um, a similar, it's based on a Legend Lore comic book series in which students mm-hmm. are transported from our world to a magical fantasy world filled with adventure sounds a lot like the D&D cartoon really doesn't it it does sound a lot like the D&D cartoon yeah yeah I mean so how do you work out the stats for characters do you have to do like a number of uh, push ups uh, do you have to try and convince the GM of stuff and this affects your strength and charisma scores? Those are excellent questions. Yes, which I'm sure they've rushed to answer. Yes, I do not know what the answers to those questions are. But you can go to a Legend or a demo at UK Games Expo this year. Mm. I might give that a whirl. Hmm. Um, so... Assuming it's no... It's using D&D 5th edition. <sighs> ba, ba, ba. Um, and that's really what I really know. I, mean, I guess there's people more familiar with the comics who should know more about it. And so you start off as some sort of pleb and then quickly morph into a demigod. I guess so. I don't know. I do not know. Here we go. Um, they say, remember all those. What would you do if you woke up on Quinn, the world of Greyhawk, or the Forgotten Realms discussions you had with your RPG buddies? Do you remember those? 
I, I do remember the uh, discussions about uh, the World of Crim that I had with RPG buddies because that was fairly recently yeah. that was on this podcast. I haven't talked to a lot of people about Crim because nobody's been really interested. Yeah. So, well, it says crossing changes you into a D&D version of yourself. Ah. So you become a bard or a wizard or a fighter with actual fighting feats just to boost you up. So it's basically, it does sound a lot like the D&D cartoon, doesn't so, it? So what if you had eights in all of your main stats? How would that end? I do not know. So I'm sure there's just going to be a lot of humans in this. That is not a thing I know. Uh, okay. But I'm sure we will find out at some point. Yeah. I'm sure there are ways to find out. So they, they, they've announced it? Is it actually come out? Or will I think there's going to be a Kickstarter later this year. Okay. Um, so uh, Hasbro's gaming revenues were up 20% in quarter one of this year. How exciting. Remember last week we mentioned that the hobby game market had dropped by 3%. In 2018, yes. In 2018. But role-playing games were up 18%. Nice. And it looks like Hasbro's gaming revenues as a whole mm-hmm. grew 20% in this last quarter. Fantastic. Good work, Hasbro. Yeah. So their gaming revenues were uh, $58 million in 2018. And they were... I have no idea what I'm looking at here. Um, Let's have a look. Oh no! So yeah, so from a year ago it was two hundred and three point five million. Yeah. This period it's two hundred and forty three point four million. That is a fair chunk of change. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a lot of money. Yeah. A lot less Magic the Gathering and stuff like that, of course. Mm-hmm. So it's not just um. Well, it's franchise brands like MTG and Monopoly. And Monopoly, yeah. yeah. They, don't, they don't even mention D and D in this. To be honest, looking at that. Uh, but but but. It's not even mentioned. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is your gaming revenue. Revenue was 58 million for all of 2018 and, and for 10.4 million for quarter one for quarter one okay that's digital gaming revenue that is as opposed game. to you know D&D hype covers okay so, so Magic the Gathering Arena yeah oh yes is that the online playable I think there was already an online playable version of it I guess so. so and Magic the Gathering Valor's Reach okay there so, you go. yes I'm afraid, I'm afraid D&D are not really going to uh, register in that sort of thing no, unless the new game studio by James Orlin kicks in. Ba, ba, ba. Hmm. Do you know what my favourite sort of sea monster is? Uh, is it a giant squid? Sort of. Okay. What's a, what's a giant, giant, giant squid? Mm, kraken. Yes! Okay. I do like a good kraken. And you can they get... They kraken fun. A garg... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, you can get a gargantuan kraken miniature, which Ooh. sounds like the most weird phrase ever. A gargantuan miniature... So just an average, then. <laughs> you can get an average... Like a miniature giant space hands. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so there's this Kraken there. Yeah. And um, you get the creature's main body is one piece. And there's separate pieces for the six tentacles. Oh, yeah. Which is a separate piece. And, and you get little rowboat. Little rowboat. That's treasure kind of chest. Super Bowl for you, yeah. yeah. Uh, and 24 in July. How does the treasure chest fit into the rowboat? Well, I don't know if they're to scale or not. Looks like... I'm, assu- I'm assuming it's not... I'm, yeah, I'm assuming they're not to scale. I don't know. Yeah. I can't answer that question. Fair enough. I do not know. Okay. But anyway, it's quite, it's quite an interesting looking... Although, look at that Kraken. It looks a bit more... Looks like some sort of fish person. Yeah. Like a... Yeah. It yeah, looks a bit humanoid almost. Like sort of, I don't know, Poseidon's just having a really bad day. Yeah. 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 I mean, for me, like, Kraken is definitely um, ultra giant squid. Mm. Yeah. So, what's Gargantuan? That's about... Oh, that's huge. Yeah. Oh, it's been huge. <laughs> Yeah, and what's it go? Medium, large, uh, huge, colossal. I think. I don't know. I have to check back my GM screen because quite, fr- quite yeah. frankly, I haven't been able to use anything of that size against any players. No, nah, fair enough. Just not being able to get the content out there today. Fair yeah, enough. Um, there's going to be a new Cthulhu role playing game from Evil Hat Productions. It's called Fate of Cthulhu. Fate of Cthulhu. I, I like your original title better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's more traditional to the spirit of love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fate of Cthulhu. Um, obviously, it's going to use their fate system. Mm-hmm. Uh, it combines time travel with the horror style of H.P. Lovecraft. Interesting. Uh, you take on the role of characters sent back in time Ooh. from a dystopian future in which the great old ones have taken over the world. Okay. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Bit of a yeah. Uh, 256 page full colour hardcover book. Wow. $35. Hmm. Hmm. A lot of setting for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's, it's on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. 
as, uh, as the time of writing, it had made $38,000 from uh, one, over 1,000 backers. Nice. That's a, 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 print, a pretty easy start indeed. Yeah, so if you like a bit of Cthulhu and you like a bit of Fate... Then get stuck in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what else have we got? Oh, well, uh, is there any updates on what happened to Wrath and Glory? Well, that is an interesting question. What has happened to Warhammer 40k Wrath and Glory? Because mm-hmm. on um, Ulysses North America website, yes. it's disappeared. Yeah. And no one knows why. It's awkward. It is awkward. Um, they're not saying anything. They've been asked questions, and um, I think the only response anyone's been able to get so far is they're discussing with Games Workshop on how it's working going forward or something like that. Yeah. Something non committal. Um, so not, the, the, not ideal, really. Well, there was some rumours at one point that they were going to spin off their own website for it. Yes. But they don't appear to have done that. Mm-hmm. So who knows what's going on? It's, all, all anyone knows, it's disappeared from the website. Yeah. It's not even in the drop-down menu when it says our games. Mm-hmm. It's disappeared from that, too. It's all very strange. It is strange. Because well, they only brought out Gen Con last year, didn't they? It, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's barely, barely been out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they've been having some trading troubles with, like, the initial books that came out. Yeah. Not having, like, all the details in that you need to actually win the game, but... Well, yeah. I do know that... Yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not saying anything. I do know that if you are, if you are a licensee, yeah. sometimes you can't say things even though you want to. Yeah. When people ask you questions, you know, you can't reply to them because you're not. Yeah. Because basically everything you say has to be approved by the licensor. Has anyone asked Games Workshop? Uh, well, Maybe. Well, they're just down the road. We should probably pop over and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so what often... It depends on the licence or but I think mm-hmm. Games Workshop have quite tight reins on that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just make announcements about stuff. Well, absolutely. Can't go around calling yourself Space Marines or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ooh, ooh. yeah. Can't, can't go around calling a Space Marine a Space Marine. <laughs> yeah. hey, you know that Grimmer Space thing we were talking about a little earlier? Grimmer space. Yeah. Do you mean like Grimmer space? <laughs> Grimmer space. <laughs> yeah. Space that is Grimmer. Right. Um, Larry Elmore, okay. who's one of the sort of legendary D&D artists, did a lot of work for uh, yeah. Dragon Lance and all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. um, has done some art for it. Ooh. He's done the art of a Zyrag, a vast silicon life form from the edge of space. Uh. I'll show you. Let me show you the Zyrag. Okay. That is a Zyrag. Now, that's Larry Elmore. Oh. Okay. That's the Zyrag. Don't get too confused. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I was thinking that just appeared to be an elderly gentleman who was not that intimidating. Oh, there, there. Okay, that's a lot of teeth. And there's a slightly zoomed in there, look. Yeah. Well, that sounds pretty gargantuan. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for something that barely fits on the Yes. Um, it says it is on the edge of known space yes. within the shattered graveyards of planets... Uh, the titanic equipment of a vanished alien race grinds on, and um, vast these Zyrags are vast silicon life forms engineered to hunt, collect, and by devouring process rare mi- minerals. Fair enough. And they've got big, wide solar cell membranes so that they can travel through the stars. It's like eat rocks and um, excrete yeah. titanium, all yeah. that sort of chance. Yeah. Okay, it sounds like it sounds lovely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what else do we have in the news? What else do we have in the news? Acquisitions Incorporated. Oh, yes, yes. You can download... You know the book's coming out later this year? Yeah. I mean, just, we, a, just a couple of months now. We were having a look at the artwork the other, the other week. Yeah, June 18th, I think. Ooh. It comes out, but it's actually quite soon. Yeah. There are eight iconic characters. Ooh. And you can download the official stat box of them in the form, format of bookmarks. Bum, bum, bum. And so, um, you know the uh, characters where there was a cartographer, a decisionist? Do you remember these? Oh, yeah. A yeah, documenter, yeah. a horse person, a lawmonger, an obviator, an occultant, and a secretarian. So you can download those oh, yeah. in bookmark format. And this one here is Talantha Three Coins, the occultant. Apparently who, who is a tiefling paladin. paladin, yeah. Why don't they just call it tiefling paladin then? Well, these are their roles. Oh, I think okay. it's. I think I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's a separate system to backgrounds. I think uh, it lays over the top of those. Right. Uh, blah blah blah. Federal spellcaster. Bead of instant karma. Bead of instant karma. When a creature Talantha can see makes an attack roll, a saving throw, or an ability check, 
She can cause the roll to be made with advantage or disadvantage once per day. Doesn't sound much like karma to me, but uh, also, so she's what level four that character looks like. Uh, okay. Forty-eight plus eight. All right. Um, you know, this isn't good podcasting. I was looking at a thing and going, yeah. um... <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's 48 plus 8. There we go. We'll just stick a link in the show notes yeah. and have a look at it. Check it out. Yes. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's nice. It's similar sort of acquisitions in style art, cartoony art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the Penny Arcade style art. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, this is a good one. In space... No one has to listen to you talk about your new car. <laughs> 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 There's no. an official alien RPG coming. Oh, how exciting. It's from Free League, those Swedish folk. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. do a lot of the really, really pretty, really, really nice games. Like Tales from the Loop and that sort of jazz. That sort of jazz. Right. And, of course, I'm sure Modifius will end up picking it up because they now produce every game ever made and ever that ever has been made or will be made. Yes. <laughs> has a stairway. I, I would imagine. It's a are. niche in the market. They saw it, they went for it. Yeah. Stop being hate for us. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't mind. I just find it amusing. <laughs> yeah. um, where are we? So, the official Alien RPG from the Swedish folks at Free League. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, it's going to be very, very pretty, as all of their things are. And it's yeah. set after Alien 2, or Aliens, as yes. we like to call it. Indeed. Uh, and before Alien 3 and Alien. Um, Resurrection. Alien whatever. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then Aliens, the sequels. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know an awful lot about it. Um, they, they say it's not about superheroes with superior firepower. It's about ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. Yeah. Um, it calls it a harsh yet hopeful universe. I'm not sure I'd call it hopeful in any way, but okay. Well, you, you, you can hope for hope. <laughs> you, you can hope that you'll be alive at the end of it. And they've got this cinematic world you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a sandbox open world campaign game mode. Right. And there's also a cinematic mode. Okay. With pre-generated uh, scenarios that you complete within a single session. And it emulates the dramatic arc of an alien film and their survival challenges where most players aren't expected to last the night. Okay. And the first one is going to be called Chariot of the Gods, uh, written by sci-fi novelist Andrew E.C. Gasker. Ooh. who wrote Death of the Planet of the Apes. I was hoping you were going to say Eric von Zanikin, but that was not to be. I did not say that. No. No. Okay. no. Exactly. There we go. Yes. Um, so, if you're a fan of Aliens, yes. that is going to be the official game. Excellent news. Yeah. WizKids have expanded their deal with Pezo to make some more Starfinder battle pre-painted miniatures. Why do you sound so depressed about that? I thought you'd be excited about that. You like pre-painted miniatures? I, I do like pre-painted miniatures. Oh, and I am pretty sure I will buy these. Yeah. Let's have a look. Do you want to see what they look like? I'm trying. I, I am trying to, but there's no pictures. Oh, that's seems no. like a bit, bit of a There's nightmare. a WizKids logo and a Starfinder Battles logo, but no pictures. So I don't know mm, exactly yes. what they're going to be like. But, you know, I really liked the Star Wars ones that Wizards of the Coast used to produce, mm-hmm. pre-painted minis. And I like um, I like generally Pezo's pre-painted minis lines mm-hmm. much more than I and getting proper minis and painting them. Yeah. So I'm sure I'll snap these up without a doubt. Marvellous, marvellous. Without a doubt. They'll make their way into a Judge Road game they're using. Yeah. I've got tons of those Star Wars ones. Yeah. Like if I'm playing a, a sci-fi game, I've got so many miniatures for it now. Right. Just those plastic ones. We should play Imperial Assault or something like that. That'll make it a much better game. Yeah. I haven't played Imperial Assault. Oh, I would like to. That's quite good. Uh, what else have we got? Warlock Dungeon Tiles. Coming in 2020, yeah. um, some pre-painted plastic 3D terrain, mm. a different terrain on each side of the tile, oh. and they're each gridded two by two tiles and could be used in different circumstances. So one side is for dungeons and buildings and the other one is outdoors and they snap together. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. There's no pricing or firm release dates announced yet though, so okay. I can't tell you any more than that. Yeah. But you know, sounds good. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we may have done the news. Very well. Okay, is the rest of the party asleep? Um, yeah, I guess so. Okay, good. I'm going to sneak over to the mage and pick his pockets. What do I find? What? Really? Are you sure you want to do that? Well, not me personally, obviously, but it's what my character would do. I don't think Curtis would be very pleased. Sounds my hands, really. Anyway, what do I find? 
Fine. Uh, you find 12 gold pieces and his pet rat familiar. Ugh. I put the rat back. Hey, I assume most of the town is quiet at this time of night? Yes. All right. I'm going to climb out the window and look for the richest house. What now? We have a plot to be getting on with, you know. Curtis, Felicity, Oliver and John are waiting for their turns. I know, I know, but it is what my character would do. So, what do I find? Ah, there's, a, there's a mansion at the end of the street with a couple of guards outside. Awesome. Better sneak up and backstab them both. You're going to murder two people. You know, you guys are the heroes, right? There's a world to save. Yeah, yeah, but it's what my character would do. OK, what happens now? Well, uh, you've just foully murdered two guards. They lie there in pools of their own blood. One has a locket with a picture of his family in it, and the other has one with a picture of his puppy in it. Oh, sweet! I steal the locket. That's not what I... Here's what my character would do. The other players are getting bored. Eh, sorry. Anyway, I want to sneak into the mansion. Is there a window nearby? Sure. Whatever. There's a window. You're climbing. You find 50,000 gold pieces and murder a bunch of innocent orphans. Happy now? Well, it's going a bit far, but fair enough. I guess I'll head back to the others now. You reach the inn. Your fellow adventurers are waiting for you. Weapons and spells at the ready. Hey, guys. Just been out for a stroll. Uh, wait. What, what, what are you doing? Why are you attacking me? As you lie dying on the ground, the last thing you hear is your former friends saying together, It's, it's what our characters will do. do. How would you like to play your favourite game in all the world? Oh, boy, would I ever. I don't know, would you ever? I suppose. I'll get my D20. All right, then. Okay, our favourite game in all the world is the game where I read out the name of a Kickstarter and you try and guess what it is from just the name. Oh, that's a favourite game of all the world. Yeah. Marvellous, marvellous. A game which you're very good at. Yeah, well, yeah, I do all right. In a mirror universe. Uh, well, apart the from that. The one where you have a goatee. You're very good at it. The one where I have a goatee? Yeah. OK. <laughs> all right, are you ready for the first one? Yeah, go on. This is carries on with a theme that you have approved of in past podcasts. That could be literally anything. <laughs> OK, you ready? Yeah, go on. Then. Monster Punk. Well, that's the name of the theme right there. You, 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 do, you do enjoy it when the word punk is atta- just like attached to the end of another word. Well, that's not actually been in any of the titles or things that have come along. It's been more conceptually. Like, we've had snow punk. Snow punk. Sand- I think yes. we might have had sand punk. As Bio-punk well. punk we had once. Bio-punk. We had bio-punk. Yeah. Well, this one is monster punk. Okay, so in line with those expectations of having punk be about some sort of genre defying or subverting sort of trope then what we have here is where you play as the monsters i know not the most original idea in the world but i think where it's going to be interesting is you play monsters and they are mm, definitely the heroes but not recognized as such that could be an idea or it could be that you're trying to help the monsters take over uh, against all the massively oppressive humans and elves and dwarves and so forth, uh, leaning into that whole sort of spire and strata thing by Harrod and Taylor, where you are dark elf slaves in a um, high elf nation. Mm. I'll give you five out of nine for that. You touched on quite a number of elements of it. Not five out of seven? All right, five out of seven then, if you insist. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, sorry. Five out of seven. Um, so it's a, a post-apocalyptic RPG. Yes. It's an original system, and it is the core rule book. Exciting. And it's about humans, yes. monsters, mm-hmm. and humans becoming monsters. All right. Um, so the humans are uh, subordinates, food, or slaves, uh, and the monsters have taken over the world. It's the tagline, the monsters were us all along. It should be. I'll be disappointed if it's not. Alas. Alas. Uh, player characters make life-binding packs of magical creatures to survive in a harsh world dominated by monsters. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it's got inspiration from sources, none of which I've heard of, but they are Shin Megami Tensai. Some sort of anime, perhaps? Perhaps. Devil Man. 
Okay. And Drakengard Nier, N I E R. Definitely sounds like a lot of Dragon Punch anime. I don't know what any of those things are. But... Me neither. I'm sure they'll be awesome. And if you know what they are, uh, please please do feel free to write in and tell us why we're so stupid for not knowing who they Yes. Yes. I always enjoy that. Okay. The next one. Yes. Is. <laughs> well, okay. That seems a little too easy, but um, fairies. I know it's a one word one, but I still think it's too easy. Uh, you really should try playing this game sometime. <laughs> oh, yes, you have. Um, anyway, so fairies, is it with an A, E, or just A, I? A, I. Oh, okay. So it's not going to be your more fae fairies. It's going to be sort of like your, I don't know, kicking, down, kicking around at the bottom of the garden sort of fairies. Um, possibly wearing some sort of delightful hats and having living in toadstools and so forth. So forth. Uh, yeah, it's like they're going to be ultra small, like probably, I don't know, quite friendly, uh, quite a modern day sort of vibe to them, um, or at least Victorians at the very latest. Um, full role playing game, uh, I'm going to say definitely not fifth edition, probably quite system light, if not its own system. Oh, there you go. I think you scored 12 points out of four. It's pretty good. That works, out to, that works out to 300%. Yes. That's the first time I've scored more points than the, uh, Things we have. Amazing. Yeah. Where you, it's exactly the things that you just said it was. Therefore, it's really much exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tabletop role playing game. Um, experience the life of a fairy in a fictional version of Earth, where mm-hmm. three to six inches in height. Yeah. Generally non violent. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Hey. Fairies by Spectra Games. Okay. Um, I went. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? Because that sounds like quite an original one. It's, it was an original system. Yeah. Uh, ends on Tuesday, May the seventh. Oh. Hardcover is only twenty five dollars. Ooh. Well, that's quite a nice cover. Hmm. Uh, very pink. Oh, um, the the system know. is an original D ten system, Ooh. and it's a storytelling game, as you said. Yes. Yeah. Well, it would have to be really. Yeah. 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 It's not the sort of thing again. Where your great weapon mastery is going to really come to the form. Hmm. Anyway, what's next? How about Infinity's Edge? Isn't that a computer game? I don't know. Is it? Hmm. This isn't. No, 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 I suppose. It might be a computer game as well. Hmm. Um, actually, I think possibly it is related to something like that. I don't know. Hmm. Eh, I'm probably just getting confused with something else. There's a lot of games uh, which go with that. So, Infinity's Edge, I would very much hope this is a sci-fi role-playing game. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, the question here is, is it something to do with Starfinder or not? I'm going to say, I hope not. I hope it's some sort of like, something a bit bit like uh, Mind Jammer, like a nice Sarah Newton that we had on the show. Um, And so it's probably going to be a sort of system light storytelling game but where you get to do all sorts of exciting things in an expanded universe mm, interesting yeah so no unfortunately you've got minus 12 points out of 4 this time oh. Um because right so I don't know if Infinity's Edge is a video game or not no however in this game you play yes. avatars in a video game oh okay so you are fantasy heroes that are the avatars in a virtual reality, massively multiplayer role-playing game. Nah. Uh, your characters are aware that they are characters. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have the advantages that um, video game characters have. For example, if you die in battle, you can respawn at your latest uh, save point. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, in Infinity's Edge, Ed, death means a loss of XP and having to go find your body to get most of your equipment back. So yeah, you play a character. You play a character in a video game. Very meta, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, bit on the nose, me, but uh, fair place then. Okay, the next one. Oh, we've got another one. We've got another one. Very exciting. What it is for the dungeon with an exclamation mark at the end? For the dungeon. For the dungeon. Uh, for the dungeon. That sounds to me like a rallying cry. So I'd expect it to be a Dungeon Keeper style game where one is defending the dungeon and um, you're playing has I don't know, a bunch of low level mooks or what have you who are attempting to guard your master's dungeon. Oh, okay, you, you just got a million points. That's exactly what it is. 
I'll tell you what, to keep your million points, you've got to guess the system, though. <laughs> Let's uh, pick a system. 5 No! Oh. So you've lost one of your million points. Okay. So you've now only got 999,999 points. Well, my other choice is something like Powered by the Apocalypse. It is that. Yes. Okay. Powered by the Apocalypse. Play the Minions, not the Heroes. A tabletop RPG about the misfortunes of a career in dungeon security. It could be fun. Maybe, yeah. for, maybe for a one, one shot or something. That is an HD storytelling game, so good for a quick mm. um, play around. Uh, but yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to get into them. Get them going for something like on a really long term basis. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so the last one. Yes, the last one is called the blackest of deaths. The blackest of all deaths. Is that right? The blackest of deaths. The blackest of deaths. Well, it's clearly a Powered by the Apocalypse game, which is concerned around a murder mystery, one shot, where all the players are accused of murdering the inventor of Vanta Black, which is the world's blackest thing, uh, which has been... Well, it's not the inventor of Black Vanta Black, but the person who has uh, taken out a paint, painting for it, so they're the only person who can make art using Vanta Black. No. And they're all... But no? Nothing oh. like that. Oh, okay. That's no. Um, it is a old school fantasy RPG. Okay. Uh, you have a bleak chance of survival. Your character is dropped into a brutal, unforgiving world actively opposed to your survival. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, no character advancement, no way to pull victory from the jaws of defeat. There's you... A handful of meagre items, a few minimal abilities, and finality of defeat. Your character will fail, your character will die, your character will struggle like never before, but not every time, and on those rare occasions when you do manage to leap from the gaping, inexorable jaws of oblivion, you'll walk away with a great story to tell your fellow gamers. There we go. Well, that sounds like a load of fun. <laughs> How's it doing for funding, Chris? <laughs> um, I can have a look if you wish. Yes, please. How's it doing for funding? Um, goal of uh, $1,500. Yes. It's made 4167 Fantastic. With 91 backers, 10 days to go. Marvellous, marvellous. Well done, Blackest of Death. Yeah. There we go. That is the end of our favourite game in all the world for this week. Yeah. It's certainly an original concept. Well, not that original. Setting yourself up to fail. Uh, I suppose you could play D&D using uh, the Call of Cthulhu. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of a bit like what that um, Alien game is probably like, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I suppose. I mean, Alien is survival horror. Yeah, I mean, it's basically you're pl- sort of playing the Dark Ages, the role-playing game. Mm-hmm. Right then. Yes. The topic of the week. Topic of the week. Topic of the week. That means we're going to have to talk about the same thing. Well, we don't have to. Oh, uh, okay. That's right then. Well, <laughs> we so, can talk about your car. <laughs> yeah. I've got a new car, you know. Yeah. Uh, Skoda Yeti. Why? It's not a Skoda Yeti. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. I it was. <laughs> um, so our topic of the week this week is salvage operation. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, um, so, oh, that's the next one from the Ghost of Salt Marsh. Yeah, so a little yeah. bit of history. So, yes, it, um, we've done U1, U2, and U3. Yes. Uh, which are the Salt Marsh trilogy, which are going to yeah. be in Ghosts of Salt Marsh. Yes. Next on the list of adventures in that um, in that upcoming hardcover is yes. this adventure called Salvage Operation, originally published yes. in Dungeon Magazine Ooh. back in June 2005. Oh, wow. We say back in, and um, let's face it, that was 14 years ago. But still a good 20 years earlier, or later, yes, a good 20 years later than uh, the others. Than the Salt Marsh ones, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we've got a jump of 20 years from first edition. This is D&D 3.5. Yeah. So it's 20 years later. Yeah. Um, this is 2005. Yeah. Um, and this is written by Mike Mills. Oh, okay. Uh, who is currently um, one of the lead, well, I think the lead designer at oh. um, Wizards of the Ghost. Yeah. I'm not sure what his job title is exactly these days. But um, so this was written in June 2005, and that was also the same month he joined Wizards of the Coast. Yes. And this was in Dungeon Magazine back when Pezo published Dungeon Magazine 
as a licensee of Wizards of the Coast okay. before Pathfinder um, mm. before Pathfinder existed. Okay. So it wasn't for another two years um, before Dungeon Magazine and Dragon Magazine were cancelled. Okay. Um, which is 2007, and then okay. uh, shortly after that was when um, Pathfinder came about. Oh, uh, okay, yes. Um, that, so, was in, that was when uh, Wizards of the Coast decided to just, like, they, no, enough of this open game license business, we're bringing it back in-house. Uh, yeah, okay. well, basically, I mean, this is slightly off-topic, but Peso, um, in rapid succession, lost the license yes. to produce um, Dungeon Magazine and Dragon Magazine, yes. and also the Star Wars RPG. Mm. So that, that's and they awesome. had to really like dramatically restructure and refocus and uh, that was when they brought out the Pathfinder RPG and real back to the wall situation well yeah yeah I, um, this I mean this is, this is totally off topic but um, yeah and there's some um, blog pieces by um, Lisa Stevens who's um, mm-hmm. the head honcho over at um, Pazer mm-hmm. and she talks about how you know, they thought the company was over yeah, yeah. And they managed to turn it around and to create their own system and decided, you know, they're not going to be dependent on other companies. Oh. You know, they're not going to just be licensees anymore. They're going to Absolutely. have their own in-course system. Well, yes, having bridge all biggest um, sources of revenue just go, oh, no, sorry, bye. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they were fortunate in a sense they got to keep the database of Dungeon and Dragon, not Dungeons and Dragons, but yeah. Dungeon Magazine and Dragon Magazine subscribers. Yes. And they were able to transfer those over Mm-hmm. to uh, Pathfinder subscribers. Ah, oh, nice. Um, which is why they, they launched Pathfinder with a massive, massive player base of like 60 or 1,000 subscribers uh-huh. right off the bat, nice. which I think GDPR wouldn't let you do these days. Yeah. But back then, it was just like, they just sent out a thing saying, if you don't want us to switch you over to Pathfinder, let us know, otherwise you're just going to start receiving these Pathfinder things instead. And people were like, yeah, sure. Why? Yeah, why not? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so I don't think you could do that these days. And it was, it was a perfect storm and a very sort of yes. fortuitous outcome in the long run for them. Yeah. Uh, uh. Um, but anyway, back on topic. Yes, yes. Salvage Operation, operation by yeah. Mike Mills. Interestingly, uh, Mike Mills made some tweets back in December 2016. Um, he, he tweets these sort of little trivia bits about Salvage Operation. Interestingly, no. mm. which kind of implies to me that they knew back then Mm-hmm. And we were already starting work on Ghost of Salt Marsh back then okay, in December yeah. 2016. Yeah, that seems so it's like sense. a two year kind of lead, yeah. lead in sort of thing. I mean, because what were they working on? They had a uh, Tomb of Annihilation that, that was uh, that then? 2016, I, I think. Remember, 20, which, which that, which year, that, yeah. That'd be 2017. And then 2018 was uh, the Waterdeep um, Dragon Heist and Dungeons of the Mad Mage. Mm-hmm. So it sort of makes sense with their sort of like. Uh, promotional things. You've got more than kinds, tumor foes. They're basically bringing out a bunch of tools uh, that then allows them to bring out something that's a bit wider. Mm. Well, anyway, um, this was originally a Shadowrun adventure. Yes. You wrote it as a Shadowrun adventure where the players infiltrate a sinking cargo ship and various hijinks ensue. Um, okay. But he says he wrote it for Shadowrun. He never got to run it for Shadowrun. Why not? Uh, he, he says, says, he says his players somehow got into a fight with Mr. Johnson, <laughs> the shadowy <laughs> corporation guy who hires runners, and they all died. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, the basic plot of this adventure is a short adventure. It was in Dungeon Magazine. It's about 12 pages long. Mm-hmm. It's more, I think, an extended encounter than an adventure. Okay. Um, it's a, basically a mini dungeon crawl aboard a sinking ship. Yep. So what's happened is this chap, um, this wealthy merchant, mm. um, years ago lost his ship with valuable cargo aboard. Yeah. And years later, it's been discovered, mm-hmm. and he wants to recover his valuable cargo. There's a box on the ship with a bunch of stuff on it. Mm-hmm. So he hires some adventurers, and they've got to go out to the ship, get into the ship, cover the cargo, and come back. Okay, makes sense. So basically, the adventure is essentially them sneaking about the ship. Yeah. Um, they get to the ship, there's a whole bunch of spiders and webs all over it, there's a couple uh-huh. of zombies and like, a couple of ghouls and stuff. Yeah. Um, so they sneak about the ship. When they discover the cargo, um, a giant squid attacks the ship. Oh, and then they Kraken, And then they've got a, yeah, well, a, a small kraken or a giant oh, squid. A kraken eater. Yeah. A kraken nut. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> the kraken eater. <laughs> 
hell of extra tentacles. <laughs> so this uh, giant squid attacks the ship, and then they've got 27 rounds, which is counted down, in order to escape before the ship's destroyed and they will die. Uh, that, that's, that's basically the, the adventure in a nutshell. It's quite, like I said, it's quite short. I don't know if they're going to be expanding it or what oh, for, okay. the, for the Coast of Salt Marsh. You're, you're right. It is quite short. It's, what, 11 A4 pages, but three of those are full-size ads from the mm-hmm. Dragon Magazine article, so that's, what, uh, 22 sides, less three, and it is uh, 19, 19 sides of A4. Actually, that's not... actually. Crash another one, 18 sides of A4. Mm. That's uh, basically about nine, page of, nine pages of adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's, that's pretty, pretty short. Sure. There's yeah. no maps or anything in there. Oh, there so. is. There's a map oh, of the ship. So oh, I missed that map. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we've got some nice artwork in there. And this crinkling sounding on the podcast. Yeah. Enjoy mm. a crinkling. Yeah. Um, there we go. So we've got map, maps of the ship. So we've got one, two, three, four decks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it's all keys. Fox and quarter deck and all sorts yeah. of Yeah, and it's all keys. And... There's a lot of locations there. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Spider nests, webbed passages, navigator's room. Uh, and there's this, lovely, there's this lovely half-orc on there who's an evil druid from a ra- from a island of cannibalistic orcs who killed the original crew. I see. That sounds awkward. He's called Krellgrog. Bless you. And he's a male half orc druid three. Ah uh, yes. Um, and it's got all sorts of statistics and so forth. I mean, uh, how, how crunchy are druids in um, like three point five? Do you remember? It's been a while since I played three point five. Yeah. I mean, everything in three point five is crunchier than it is in um, fifth ed. I mean, uh, just look, I, at I, this, I, look at this stamp. Uh, I, I, I mean, basically, is he like a tough nut to crack? Oh. um... I guess so. I mean, he's got a challenge rating of three. Mm-hmm. It depends on your party size, really. Yeah, essentially, yeah. I mean, they've got the, the scaling thing. Uh, where can I find that? I saw it. There we go. Scaling the adventure. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can change the adventure if you've got first level characters or if you've got third and fourth level characters. Oh, okay, yeah. Because right. it's designed for second level characters, I think. Uh, is it? Let's have a look. What's it designed for? Okay. Low level, well, low level first to fifth in total. Yeah. Is. But, yeah, it's written for second level characters and then you can you can scale it yeah, according to what you need to do yeah oh. I mean that's basically it there's not an awful lot else to say about it to be honest um, oh. quite a lot of spiders to fight yes um, with some ghouls with some zombies yeah <laughs> which are the remains of the old crew yeah um, I mean how, how, how do you uh, improve this um, for first edition well I guess it depends on what its function is in the book if it's yeah. just like a filler encounter of some kind mm-hmm. it's just like presented as a short sort of 12 page thing or maybe it's expanded into something much bigger yeah because uh, who I, you know who knows well, I mean looking at those um, Salt Marsh Adventures we have been looking at mm-hmm. they've been varying in length quite a bit haven't they like uh, the yeah like the first one was relatively short 32 pages yeah so it's about half the length of one of those mm-hmm. If that, um, I think one of the things I'd probably change is I'd probably do something uh, to add a certain level of randomness to the countdown encounter at the end. Yeah. If, or, like, not reveal to the players how long they have. Because if they know that they have... Well, I don't think, you, I don't think you reveal it to the players. So I think the, 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 GM knows, the GM knows what's going on. I don't think you have to reveal it. Let me have a look at the countdown itself. Just yeah, yeah. Crinkle through. Crinkly, crinkly. Crinkly, crinkly. Uh, mm. Where is the countdown then? Here we go. So the, um, the countdown. Yes. Um, so um, the one that comes at the end. So this is an old and dying giant squid. Oh. Too frail to return to the deep. Oh. It's drifted near the ship and it's crazed with hunger and it attacks the ship uh, and it causes leaks that are slowly flooding the hold. Yes. And that half orc druid managed to calm the squid for a bit with a lucky wild empathy check. Yes. But the squid didn't leave, and um, at some point, its hunger and illness drives it back for a final attack on the ship. Yeah, I would hope that someone's prepared good berry. <laughs> um, so, uh, the squid's second assault coincides with when the PCs discover the box, which mm-hmm. is in the hold, that they've been sent to recover. Oh. Um, and uh, the ship's hull, it says, creaks and tilts and supports snap, and water pours into the hold. Yeah. And then we've got a 27-round schedule, which I don't think, I don't think you tell... Normally it's 27 rounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you, each round, you, so things don't happen every round. So things happen mm-hmm. on round 1, 2, 11, 16, 23, and 27. 
Yeah. So like on, on round 23, it says areas 5 to 11 flood completely. Okay. So that's one sort of level of the ship. Mm-hmm. Um, round 27, the ship sinks beneath the... But no, can't even talk. Beneath the, ship, the waves. <laughs> yes, the ship sinks beneath the waves, carrying the spiders, the remnants of Tharzak's cult along with it, along with any PCs, unfortunate enough to still be on board. So it's like 27 rounds. Mm. So that's 27 times what? About six seconds? Yes. Uh, if it says 30 rounds times six, that would be... Three minutes. Yeah. So in under three minutes, this ship sinks. Mm. Seems quite quick. Well, it's been attacked by a giant squid. It is being attacked by a giant squid. I'd like to use, like... I mean, for this, I'd be like, uh, you know what? You know what's more fun? Random. Random is more fun. I'd use... Uh, what's all these new countdown things? That is exactly the kind of thing I would use, because every time I've used it, it's caused people to freak themselves less right and sense. It's like, oh, yeah, no. Um, uh, I, I've been having a lot of fun with them myself. It's like, oh, yes, yes. It is a ten dice. Roll them and remove any fives and sixes. And they're like, oh, we don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I generally do it on initiative count 20 mm-hmm. uh, just to represent the thing. But there is a very realistic chance that it could go on for ages or it could all go fits up. Oh yeah, in my game on Thursday, one of the characters um, he was doing because you know in what sort of new you you use that mechanic also for death and dying rules. Oh yeah. So gets knocked unconscious. He's got to make an endurance check, which is three d six for his character. Yeah. Um, Remove sixes until he's got none left. Mm -hmm. Uh, First roll three sixes. Oh. (laughs) Unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens occasionally, not often, but occasionally. Yeah, same same old spot where you'll be. Fascinated to know how's off your assault cannon exploding in uh, the old version of Space Hulk. Yeah. yeah. That was triple ones in that case, but yeah. yeah. Uh, what's, what's that? Behind. 1 in 36. What's 36 times 6? Uh, 1 in 2. 3. Uh, 6. 6. Yeah. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. 6. 3. They'll, they'll probably have the druid as per the... Um, I wonder if they'll expand maybe like the journey to the ship. Yeah, yes, that, like that, 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 that would be interesting. Or maybe having some um, sea-based encounters. Yeah. Like we've I mean, you've got to remember the context of these. Yeah. These are in a magazine. They're yeah. short adventures in a magazine. They're not hardcover books. Oh, oh, precisely. So, you know, you don't necessarily get all the you, the pre, preamble and the after thing. It's all like, right, this is it, and then you fit it into your campaign yeah. in any way you wish. Oh. And they're often set it neutral so that you can do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things about the Ghost Salt Marsh, though, is they're supposed to be bringing out and demoing the new rules for nautical combats and so forth. Yeah, that is true. That so, is true. So it seems like this would be an excellent chance to right. have a nautical combat with a ship, with a uh, giant squid. Ship and a giant squid, yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe, maybe. Or, or, or even on the journey there, having things like, you know, there a storm blows up and you're uh, trying to survive to get your way, way on. Because I think we did, in the very first episode, the uh, Sinister Secrets of Salt Marsh, mm-hmm. when we look at that, we were comparing that to the predicted size of Ghost of Salt Marsh, so presumably there's got to be um, some extra material in there somewhere, because I don't think... Any of these can be particularly huge, can they? Um, I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. Well, because we've got what salvage operation here, that's quite short. Bar the Abbey, Hammerwort's Fate, and then, as you said last week, the size. Yeah. Let's have a look at what Arn of the Abbey is. So Arn of the Abbey is uh, by Randy Maxwell. Yes. It's for uh, AD&D First Edition. Oh, good enough, yeah. Uh, producing, was it 92, did we say? Yes, 92. 92. 92 for Dragon Magazine. Uh, Dungeon Magazine. Oh, in fact, it's not AD&D. It's even before that. It's D&D. Oh, okay. It's pre pre AD and D. Uses the basic set. OG D and D. Yeah, uh, four yeah. to six player characters. Yeah. Levels one to three. About twelve total levels. Oh, it says, that's the, so yeah, it says the adventuring party should be basically lawful in alignment, varied classes, with at least one cleric of third level or two or more clerics of lower levels. Oh, that's so adorable. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, um, so it says. Here we go. I mean, bear in mind, we're looking at this for the first time as... Absolutely, yeah. as we speak. Uh, there's a large band of local pirates have quarrelled violently. Yes. And their struggle has left an island uninhabited. They burnt the abbey to the ground, but suffered so many casualties they could hardly sustain themselves, and thus were soon destroyed by local mariners. Oh, uh, yeah. Now yeah. the mariners would later claim 
the small strategically located island and build a lighthouse there. Okay. But so far, they haven't been able to land safely on the island because they kept being met by a horde of undead. That does sound unfortunate. That would explain the demand for clerics. Hmm. Um, so they're hired, the PCs are hired by these mariners yes. to explore and clear the island of any hazards. Yes. Um, you get paid 2,000 gold pieces to do How so. How much? 2,000. Crikey. Okay. And it's really worth more back in the old days. Yeah, I yeah. guess so, yeah. Yeah, uh, and mariners uh, will give them all sorts of things. Yeah. And basically you've got, like, a blob-shaped island. Yeah, so you've got a map of the island. Reefs, yeah. reefs, reefs uh, with, like, a little bay at one point. Yeah. At the end of it, we've got this area called the Skull Dunes. Ah, lovely. Um, the Skull Dunes. Um, Just after. So the small, there's a small island. It's about a mile wide, two miles long. Okay. Um, the southernmost tip has a safe place to land a boat. That's yeah. the only place you can land it, and that's the Skull Dunes. Yeah, otherwise it's jagged rocks all the way. And um, these are like desolate dunes. Um, and uh, yeah. They're big sand dunes, basically. Apparently when the Abbey was, was built, evil clerics populated the dunes with hundreds of skeletons. Oh. And then there was this mad special scepter that allowed, allowed safe passage through the dunes. But that scepter was destroyed in the fire. I've got to ask. They've got hundreds of skeletons brought from the mainland. Mm. So now you've got like, evil, this... evil clerics. Yeah. How did how did the pirates get on? <laughs> I'm just I'm just asking. I don't know. But the skeletons are now this uncontrolled minefield of undead. Oh, awkward. It sounds unfortunate. Yeah. Impossible to avoid by stealth. It says. Yeah. Um. It says here we go. It answers your question here. When the pirates attacked, the skeletons made them pay dearly. But the pirates eventually cleared a path through the undead and pushed through to the abbey. Oh, okay. There you go. That's what happened. Right. So, yeah, so you've got to get through these skull dunes. Yes. Fighting all the skeletons. There's loads of wandering monsters on the island. Uh-huh. We've got zombies. Sturges. Giant centipedes. Normal rats. Normal rats. Giant, giant rats. rats. Oh, a mule. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the abbey's mules have gone wild and now roam the entire island. <laughs> However, the DM is strongly advised not to give experience points for the pointless thing of It's well within his rights to deduct experience points from PC's total for such actions. So there you go. Come to the ending. Cool. Everything. But not the mules, man. Not the mules. Hands off the mules. Oh, dear. We've also got skeletons and a giant black widow spider. Okay. Right. Um, so you, you, want, so you, you, you fight through the skeletons. You yes. cross the aisle with those random encounters and stuff. Um, and then you get to... Oh, and there are some the clerics. The Abbey Ruins. Oh, okay. There's a chap called Ozymandias. Someone straight from... Uh, well, we'll look upon his what works under uh, despair. Hmm. Uh, and someone, and called, someone called Odium. Oh. So o- o- Ozymandias is... Let's have a look. Who's Ozymandias? He's the high one, the leader of the survivors. Yeah. A capable administrator, but mm-hmm. does not inspire loyalty or trust in those under him. No. Nah. Mm-hmm. And Odium's like some sort of trailer chap, it looks like. Yeah, he was visiting the Abbey on business when the pirates attacked. Oh. He's a grumbler and annoys everyone with his constant griping. Odium and Ozymandias dislike each other intensely. I see. There's Baby, a mercenary. Yes. Well, I suppose, I suppose if you're going to be called Bailey, if you're going to get good at fighting. Well, there's Ogman Strong. He's no. a huge, stupid, mean-spirited fighter. Oh, seems a bit mean. Then we've got this nice, and we've got various clerics as well. Yes. And then we've got this nice map of the Abbey. Yeah. Uh, clerics, guards, kitchens, uh, various quarters, barracks, meditation rooms, traps, tripwire traps. Oh, nice, um, nice. Open pit in illusion, pit traps. APC, uh, so what's that? Oh, okay, so it's basically just a, it's a pit covered by an illusion. Yeah. Seems a bit mean, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah um, there's a living crystal crystal statue Ooh. within the Abbey, a treasure room. Yeah. Full of treasure, which has a living iron statue in it. Oh, crikey, yes. Uh, and and that's, that's basically it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a clear, is a clear the Abbey of bad guys and stuff. Yeah, adventure. Yeah. It's about the same size as the adventure we just looked at. Yeah, so again, quite small. But yeah, quite a short. Well, it's, again, it's a magazine adventure. Yeah, I, I suppose what we would be looking at is probably putting one of these two. Up first, as it were, mm. has sort of um, a sort of dipping your toes into exploring and then mm. up in difficulty with the Sense of Secrets of Salt Marsh, which appears to be, from what can make out, one of the more substantial yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these, aren't, these two adventures we've looked at today aren't really heavily in plot, are they? One of them is no. get on a ship, 
grab a box and get away again. Yeah. This one is go to an island with an abbey on it and clear it of monsters, yeah. essentially. That's the... Kill them all. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's those two mini... Yeah, they're mini adventures, I'd call them. They're not They're not full-blown adventures, are they? No, no indeed. Yeah. Um, and how would this compare to, say, the Yawning Portal? Well, I mean, to be fair, that does mean it's actually quite good because it means that they've got more space to expand and give us some actual proper rules and rulings mm. for nautical combat. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe some ideas about supporting exploration. Yeah. The um, much underserved third tier of uh, D&D. Yeah. Third well, pillar of D&D. Yeah. So that one's in issue 34 of Dungeon Magazine from uh, March or April 1992. Ah. It's quite an old one, that. So yeah. it's... Yeah, so when... It was 83, wasn't it, the Salt Marsh stuff? The Secret, yeah. the Secret Salt Marsh. So it's nearly 10 years yeah. after um, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we leap to 2005 for Salvage Operation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got, what, another two to look at? Yeah, we'll look, we'll look at that another time. Yeah, yeah. Look, look. So yeah, we've, maybe, we've maybe. covered two today, yeah. but the other two are... Uh, yes, one's, what's it, the uh, Styes and Tamarout's Fate. Tamarout's Fate yeah. and the Styes. Mm-hmm. So we'll look at those two next week, shall we? Yes, let Yeah. Well, there we go. Mm. I think we're probably done for the day, then. I think we probably are. Did you enjoy that? I enjoyed it very much. Was that the best one you've had all afternoon? Yes. Did I mention, by the way, I've got a new car? Yeah, yeah you said the white's going to be Thank you, everybody, for listening. Yes. It has been an absolute pleasure, as always. Well, we hope you've enjoyed listening to the podcast very nearly as much as we enjoyed making it. But yeah, thank you, everybody, for listening. Please, please, please do pop on over to our Patreon if you want to hear the extended version not the extended version, the... Uh, the bonus material. The bonus material. That's what bonus I meant to say. Bonus material. Bonus material. Um, and the alternate version of our sketch. Yes. And also support this podcast because oh. um, it does cost us a lot of money to make. Goodbye, everybody. We will Goodbye. talk to you next week and we will discuss Tomorrow's Fate and the styles. Styles? Styles. Styles. The styles. The styles. Yes. Not the styles. Yeah. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye. That was the best podcast yet. No, I'm just joking. It was awful. The dog that was howling outside my bedroom window last night would have done a better job. I'm considering swapping Russ and Peter's heads just to see what will happen. Do let me know next week if you notice any difference.